Hi, and welcome to Just Paint It. I'm your host, Christina Watts, and today we're gonna paint a nice river stream trickling down on some rocks. So let's get going. On my palette today, I have a couple blues, three greens in different hue shades, a purple, two browns, white, of course, titanium white, a brighter yellow, and a raw sienna because it's nice and earthy. I'm starting today with a black painted canvas because I'm toning it um, black for today's painting just because it gives a nice little kind of hue underneath these colors. We're going to start where I always like to start, the sky. I'm going to dip my wetted brush into my white paint and a little bit of the darker blue and a little bit of the lighter blue so that I have a triple colored brush and I'm going to start whipping these colors in. So in my mind, the stream is gonna run down on the lower two thirds of this piece. So I'm gonna focus my blues up top where I'll also put some trees and other foliage. But in order to do that, we have to do the furthest thing away, which is the sky. And I like nice loose brush strokes. I am using a this is almost like a three quarter inch flat brush. I'm jabbing it through all of my different colors of paint so that I have a variety of color and I'm being careful not to over blend. I will use the darker blues, mainly in the corners, as a vignette. That way the light comes drawn through the center of this piece and over and it'll look really, really nice when we're finished. The two blues that I'm using here are a teal blue and a cobalt blue. And I accidentally dipped into a little green there but wiped it off. So that's okay though, because I know those trees are gonna go over on that side anyways. Your brush strokes should go in, I would say zigzag patterns. That seems to work the nice crisscross and zigzag it all the way through. So I want to just blend that out. Okay, I'm going to take a little step back here and see if what I have on this canvas so far is what I like and what I'm looking for. And I'm going to drag that sky down into the water. Sometimes you can touch up a painting for, for months. Sometimes I'll even do a painting and then come back to it years later and, you know, after you've gotten even better at painting and then go into sections and just fix a few things. They're never, they can sometimes never be over. Okay, that is a good start in the sky. Now we're gonna move down into the water. But um, I'm gonna put some dark forms in first for rock shapes as well. Um, when you're doing a landscape, a stream, a, a river, you want to plan out with your brush where this is going to go roughly before you, you go down that road of adding it in. So I'm still using the blue and the white on my brush and I'm thinking to myself, stream's going to come in from maybe over here and drop down and then head off here. I never want to end my stream directly on any corner or start with any corner just because there's um, an aesthetic to this that uh, makes for it to look a little more pleasing when it just doesn't abruptly end at a corner, particularly in a landscape. Okay, so wiggly strokes, give myself some idea. I'm gonna jut some rocks into here, so I'm not too concerned with, you know, these random lines that I'm putting in right now. 
just trying to get an idea for my placement. And I might have it even kind of come down on the side too here. So streams coming in, it's gonna come over these rocks, maybe a few spots as streams do trickle over different areas. And then out, maybe out a little this way. It's always a balancing act with these things. All right, so if that's the area, the center that I want my stream to be in, now I need some rocks. And that I like to do with blue, sorry, not blue, purple, and some burnt umber. And even though this is a black canvas and these aren't hardly gonna show up, it's important to have these in here. And I am literally gonna paint in a few random squares here and there. And think of them as that, rectangles and squares. You know, they can jut out around the tops if you like. This does not have to be perfect. You just need these forms in here for now. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we have our paint sort of laid out. And now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna start in with the trees up top. It's a rare moment for me where I'm actually doing a decent brush cleaning. Usually I, I'm good going right into the next paint color, but uh, today we're in gonna go to green and purple and dark won't help me there. So I am putting my brush into the dark green as well as this really nice uh, chromium oxide green. And I am going to start kind of putting in some bush this way. I'm also gonna add some of the blue on here because blue and green is just a super nice color to have together. And I'll probably get into some of my dark. I'll just push this to an even darker side. This is where your color mixing comes into play. You want sort of more of a dark foresty green. So I, I am adding some of the umber to that. And we're just using the flat of the brush to really kind of come up and down with these types of strokes over and through. This will throw your trees in nice and fast. I'm going to try and go a little darker so that I can add lights later. Again, this is a nice little stream coming through, so I'm going to make some bigger trees. Otherwise, this stream will look like a river. So, put it in there, grab some blue. I'm jumping around my colors to get this in. Sometimes I am wiggling my brush sideways when I come down by the rocks just because it's just the way to get into their, those areas. And I'm gonna go get some darker green again. Okay. Notice how I've left some of the sky showing through. I want this side to come up higher so there's less sky here and more sky as we go over towards this area here where the creek's coming in because probably will be less of a bush there. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. So again, start with the dark green, mix your greens and your brown if you have to, with a little blue. Don't have to mix it so well that you know it's completely one color, but just enough so that you have that indication of uh, something darker. Using the side of the brush and just pulling that down. 
I'm gonna pull it up, you can do that too. And then throw some lighter green there, pull that up the side, back to the darks. I'm gonna make this tree here taller than some of these other ones because trees have come in different heights, right? So you wanna make sure you have a behemoth of a tree in these other ones that shows up. Again, adding blue. Back into my lovely mix of colors. Darks down here. Now, if you want to come up on some of these trees and just wiggle your brush, what that will do with these flat brush is uh, that will kind of give you some branches so you can tap on the way down if you like the looks of that. It's really up to you. And this is uh, something that I would go back in with highlights and do, and uh, maybe even a, a smaller flat brush. But um, it's another way to make trees that are interesting. It's nice to have a loose landscape though, a uh, nice painterly one. So that, and, and to really just quickly lay it in. If you spend too much time in one area, what can happen is um, you don't see the rest of the painting. And so you want to jump around your piece. So you want to get in, you want to do this part, you want to jump to the other one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some trees down here. Like, you know, this, this is a little bit more farther away. So as the trees come down into this area, in the distance, they don't need to be really big. And a little bit like that. And into the water. So water's fun because it, you should go horizontal when it's horizontal near the top. That's what we're doing here. And it gives us a little bit of reflection from the trees. But we'll be building up these layers of paints. So you don't have to worry too much here. Just add that green in and come on down. And I've got some of these trees done this way over here. So again, I got to make sure that I do the same on the other side. Okay, we talked about not spending a lot of time in one area and I'm going to heed my own advice here and start moving on. Okay, so we have these trees here. We're gonna throw in some moss and stuff here and there in the rock area. This is typically something that I might do last, but I just wanna block in some loosely right now. That way I kinda have an idea and I have a little bit of color to play with on my rocks. I'm watching that these sort of come in this way. Just the way I feel like doing this painting. Nothing, um, nothing really scientific about it. And I'm gonna use blue as well. There's a looseness of this, a little color on the rocks, a little bit of plants going on. All these lovely rocks just get built up bit by bit. And I got the brown mostly over on this one. And a few down here. And I would go back in and I would put in like the odd tree on these rocks as well. I'm just gonna give this this little bit of color. Darkness over here. Okay. All right, so we're gonna leave those rocks to uh, set again and um, and they'll just throw some purple ones over here because this is so stark and black. We just want to make sure it's got some color here. And purple is a good one to use. If I echo it on that side, I need to do a bit on this side as well. I promise this will look like something shortly, a little more of something. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to wash my brush off again. 
We're being very good today with our brush washing. And we've only used this one flat head brush throughout the whole painting. I love these brushes, they're super versatile, they're one of my favorites. And now we need to get into the creek. And we need to add some of the, the layers to this. Okay, so we've got the top kind of coming in nice here, but when it starts trickling down, then what happens is it shifts and it falls and it has little spots where it rests and it continues on. And um, the, the, they're so nice to watch and so relaxing to see in real life. And it's important that, uh, you know, you just sort of get a, an idea that this is a moving body of water and it has, you know, it goes over rocks and it falls down and it needs to sort of have this flow to it. So as you can see, I start sort of with my brush in an area and then drop it down and give it sort of a wiggle. My brush is loaded with white and the two blues. So that is an important thing to take away from this is to keep your brush, uh, not just with one color, but with a few and um, sort of be light handed with this. Okay, I'm not using a ton of paint on my brush. I'm gonna let this come down around some rocks here and then over. I love these sort of strokes where you're, you know, doubled up and it's falling down and, you know, we can jut some rocks into this later and make it even better and some shadows. Okay, it's gonna fall down. This, I think I like this idea of this kind of falling down around a rock over here. So we are gonna do that. And then over a bit more down to the base where it kind of heads off out, but you know, not, not to the corner. And then as it comes down to the bottom where it's more kind of a calm again, then your strokes do not come down the canvas. They're gonna come horizontal. Okay, so that's a lot of white there. I'm gonna jump into some more blue because that is a rock and um, I want these rocks to sort of show up a bit better. Now we are gonna do a little bit of a splash down here. So I'm not too worried how this looks right now. Although if you want to, you can wisp it up with some crisscross brush strokes. And I have a lot of weight on that spot there. I want it up top. And I want this to kind of go around that rock. So my brush strokes are gonna go around that rock while at the same time trying to keep them horizontal. I'm even gonna have some go through the rock and I'm okay with that because I'm gonna fix these rocks up anyways with some more color. Okay, and then this was gonna fall down that way. Okay, so this was gonna head over to this rock here and maybe there's a bit more of a ledge here. So here comes more of the water falling from this part and flowing down over here. And these are just things that you'll pick up and you'll be like, yeah, it feels like it needs a little bit of a waterfall there. Maybe more of a stream there. And out you go. Water is really easy because you just have to brush it the way that it would go, the way that it would flow. Okay, use a light hand, soften your strokes out. Now with that, I'm gonna get a little bit more blue on my palette because I'm uh, going to need some more of the darker kind, which uh, today's version is cobalt blue. And we're gonna grab some of that and just go a little darker in a few spots here. Especially right about here and there. I'll probably come back and do another hit of white on there, but that's good for now. And we, I'm looking at this, I, I kind of see this like nice little formation here. I'm going to carve it out. I know this is just going below where maybe you guys can see, but what I'm doing is I'm going to spread this creek out so that it does go out this way a little bit on the canvas. So I'll just pick it up and show you. Okay, so right here, it goes out. Oops. 
so it comes down and goes that way. And over here. You can really get lost in the land of Zen when you are doing these types of paintings because now you can clearly see a nice rock here. And we'll start playing some of that up. You start to sort of see the rocks in your formation and then you work with them. It's uh, pretty, pretty fun. And this is sort of how paintings have their own life. Okay, we're gonna go back. We're gonna hit some of these rocks now with our palette knife. It's just, just a standard diamond palette knife. And we're gonna get some of the dark on my palette knife. A little bit of the purple. And definitely some of, we've got, now we've got the raw sienna. I'm gonna hit a little bit, a touch of the brighter yellow. So we're making kind of a real sort of earthy color here. Um, but one with a variety of colors, cause that's what would be on a rock. And white, because we don't wanna go super dark. Now we need the highlights in, and this is how you can quickly do them. Okay. Nice little spread of paint. Even a little blue in there would help. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna cut in and we're gonna say we have uh, rocks there, here, as they come in down on the sides there. I'm gonna carve that in over here. We're gonna get some more green to add to this. And what we're looking at doing is just sort of hitting some of these highlights in here, scraping them in. Leave some cracks, right? Some cracks would be the, sort of where the natural crevices might happen. back into my flat brush. And white and blue, maybe just a touch of purple too, touch of purple for some highlight to shadows. And we're gonna come down, that's too much purple. This, the white and the blue will be good. Okay, so we needed some uh, marks to kind of come down here. And we wanted some spray, right? We want some spray to pop back up. So whisk that around there. Now that uh, this is dry, you can kind of do this. Very light of hand, right? You want to have a little bit coming out this way. Same over here, a little bit of spray out that way. Nice and easy. Gonna put a little bit more blue in here just to have more covering up some of that dark green. So almost using this like a glaze, it's pretty light. say it kind of came down here again. Some of that came out wisping out this way. And that way and out this way. Make sure you balance out your uh, white wherever you put it. So if you've got some pretty good strokes this way, you definitely want to add them down here. If you feel that that area is too much of a draw on your eye, go over top with some blue. 
just flip it out, run it out. And we're gonna bring this rock kind of back up here. This piece is just hanging out along with this one. It'll touch a color on that. We'll put a little bit on that guy over there. Just like a mossy rock would feel like if it was in a watered in area. And maybe got some bushes here. So if you don't like anything, just throw in a few bushes and that will solve your problem. Cause obviously this would have a few bushes here and there that could cover up any of the rocks that you don't like. Maybe you needed them around your tree bases. Again, don't forget this side. Oh, too much white there. Rub that out. All right, bring them over. Smaller as you go up. It's gonna have that one come right out over the edge here, because to me this looks a little funny with the water, so I'm gonna cut that out by throwing in some bush that just sort of comes over a bit. It's always these thoughts that you have at the very end of your painting, those fine little touches that take the most time, it seems. This has got a little green on it, so this should knock back the white, just so that I can kind of come down and around there. I know when you come around a rock too, it gets kind of darker right there. So I just want to add a little highlight there. Let's just take a step back. I'm going to grab my smaller brush. And add in that flow. Wet my brush and just drag that out more. So this brush is wet and this is going to help me to just direct some of that water and just scrub it around these spots that it needed to go. Okay, I think you get the idea on this one. I will keep playing. You can add more paint on this. You can do little highlights in the trees if you like, but uh, this is a really great way to start a landscape and to do a bit of a, a creek with a waterfall and have it flow out. So with that, I'm gonna sign off on this painting and um, this is a really good indicator of how far you can get in a half an hour. So give it a shot and try this one out. It's a lot of fun. I will probably still pick away at this one um, and finish it off some more, but um, it's just all in the little bitty details from here on out. So thanks for watching and have an artful day.